Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise God, saints. Father, I just praise you right now. Thank you for this word you've put on my heart, Lord, to give. And I pray, Lord, that you will anoint this tongue right here, Lord, that you will just so fill me with your fire right now, Lord. And fill your saints, O oh God. Fill us all, Lord. Fill your church, Lord overflowing where we cannot contain it Lord where it'll just has to flow out Lord out of our bellies you said Jesus shall flow rivers of living water let that be so today teach us Lord teach us in the way O oh God and crush and demolish every demonic force every demonic force of the devil and the world and the flesh O oh God break it and crush it today in behalf of your church Father in Jesus name Amen Praise the Lord. You know, a good pastor knows the sheep. He knows his sheep that the Lord has him shepherding. And therefore, the Holy Spirit speaks to his people. And he's trying to get the attention of his body right now. He's trying to get the full, undivided attention of his church to let the church know that there's much breaking, much breaking that has to take place in the body of Christ. There's uh, just, I mean, it's like there's just so little brokenness in the body of Christ across the board. It's, it's almost like it's just a big, uh, it's like a suedo, like a fake body. It's, it's something man has made in their finite mind they use their finite mind to make Christ in their own image after their own likeness and instead of believing what the word says they they say <clears throat> they, 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 they they devise ways to to make loopholes to to get around what the truth is So that they can do their own thing. And attach the name of Jesus onto it. And when they do that, they do it so they can make their self feel justified and feel good. And this is what we see in the church today. But someone who is really devoted to God, someone who is totally, completely sold out to the Lord to the best of their ability by the, the knowledge that they have that the Lord has given them. A person who is cooperating with the Lord, who is working out their salvation with fear and trembling, wants to be pleasing to God in every area of their life. They want to be that vessel that God so desires to make them into, that golden vessel. With everything coming upon the earth right now, all the judgments of God falling upon the earth, the judgments are falling right now. And soon, one day, very soon, probably within our lifetime, the wrath of God will be poured out. But we, as, as believers, are not appointed unto the wrath. We are already delivered, hallelujah, from the wrath of God. If he, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 1.10 says, who hath delivered us. Jesus, he hath delivered us from the wrath to come. See? And then if he, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 says the same thing. We are not appointed unto wrath. But judgment is another story. Judgment is another avenue, if you will. God uses judgment to turn his people back to him. But his people, down throughout history, for the most part, have not responded positively to the judgments of God. They've shaken their fist in the face of God. And God brought the judgment and God used the instruments that he chose, as in Nebuchadnezzar, as in Syria, Assyria. God used Assyria to punish Israel, to disperse the children of Israel, to destroy the northern kingdom. Because they were worshipping their self. They were worshipping self and their own idols. And God brought Assyria down upon them and dispersed the ten tribes. 
and God, his principles are for sure from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, the last verse. God will have a people, a bride, spotless and blameless. But see, when we hear that spotless and blameless, we always are looking on the outward appearance. See, God is looking on the heart. God is looking on the heart. You remember the story in Second and First Samuel 16, and Samuel is going to anoint David the king. He's going to anoint a king of Jesse's sons, and all of Jesse's sons come through, and they're all dressed real nice and real prim and real proper. Like we see in this church age of today, a lot of people in the church age today dressed all nice. They drive the nice cars. They drive. They look the part. Like they think. Like like man has devised a Christian should be. And for the most part, it's just an imitation of the world of this age that we are in. And it, they look just like the world. But God told Samuel, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. All the way through seven sons, I believe. You got any more sons, Jesse? There's only one more left. He's out in the field taking care of the sheep. He was a shepherd. See, God is a shepherd. God shepherds his sheep. He shepherds us all. And he puts rams in the flock. To look out for the wolves, so to speak. And God has made us shepherds here. To shepherd the sheep. But if the sheep don't listen and don't do what the shepherd is is saying to them. It, what the shepherd is, is. For instance, a cast sheep is a sheep that's laid on its back. It can't do anything. It's cast. It's, its legs are straight up in the air. It's just laying there. And it's going to die. It's going to die. If the shepherd doesn't find it, if the shepherd doesn't go and pick it up and turn it over and then rub it and take care of it right there on the spot. See. And we know of cast sheep. And God's uprighting them. God's showing us how to upright them and take care of them, help them. Or there, there's some sheep who are so infected with, 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 the, with the demonic forces and, and it's, that's representative of all the flies all over their nose and everything and just and, and, you know, and it's just, they, they can't even breathe. So the shepherd comes and puts oil all over the head of that sheep and just and just ministers that life, that, that oil, that Holy Ghost. But if, but if the sheep is rebellious and the sheep doesn't want to receive the truth, then there's nothing the shepherd can do. Nothing. See, the, the time we're in, we have to be sold out. We have to be completely, 100%, unequivocally sold out to the Lord and know the Lord and be broken vessels in His hand. Hallelujah. Crucified vessels. Dependent solely upon the Father. And you might say, well, I don't need to depend on the Father. I have plenty of money and I have plenty of this and I have a nice house and I have a nice car and I have everything that I need. But see, one day the judgment of God is going to hit and all that stuff that we have in the natural realm is going to be gone. Or it's going to be useless. It might not be gone, but it will be useless. And what you will need in that hour is the Spirit of God. But because many of you are not cultivating, 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 dying to self, Crying out to God to cultivate the Son, Jesus Christ, in your heart. You will be very, very dry. You're, you're, you'll be like one of the foolish virgins. You will have no oil in your vessel. And so God's calling out to you today. And He's saying, do what my word says. And if you don't know how to do it, cry out to me, says the Lord. And I will show you. I will do it in you and through you. Stop trying to find loopholes to justify the way you're living when you know the way you're living is not right. Because God loves you and God will see to it because you are a chosen vessel of His, called of Him. You responded to the call one day. You came to the Son. He saved you. And then He says, now do this. And you say, no, I don't want to do that. See? Or, or you'll find a loophole. You'll find a group of people who, 
who look good to you. And then they're very happy people and they're joyful people and they're loving people, so to speak. Okay, And they have the title Jesus upon them. And so you connect yourself with that people and, and, then, and then you become like them. And they are so far from being like Christ. But, but you think you're alright, see? See, the Christ life is a sacrificial life. It's a dying to self life. Daily. Every day. See, the Lord would have you remember, and He has me remember this morning. He's showing me every day, every day, every day, God brings me and my wife to the place where we surrender to Him every single day. Because we want to walk in the newness of life. We want that life of Christ to flow through us. Hallelujah. In Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you. I beseech you. This is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul. Paul was a shepherd. Paul was a shepherd. He shepherded sheep. And when they rebelled, Paul gave them the word. But if they continued in their rebellion, Paul turned them over to, for the destruction of their flesh. He turned them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh. And God's never had us do that. I turned people over to the Lord. I said, Lord, you just take them and do what you got to do. But I've never heard the Holy Spirit say, turn that one over to Satan. But if I did, I would. It's not me. It's not you. It's not us. It's Christ in us. God wants a vessel he can flow through. Are you that vessel today? Are we going to be obedient to this word right here? Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. Not by the, the hammer of God. Not by the fist of God. By the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Have you done that today? Have I done that today? I believe I have. I have the witness in my heart that I have. It's not, it's not always, I mean, it's not easy, okay? When you're, when you're coming to the place of brokenness and you're coming to the place, you know God's calling you to break you. You know God wants you to be broken. You know God wants you to lay down your, your flesh, lay down your self-life, okay? Lay it down. None, no flesh will glory in God's presence. No flesh. Now, what the church has done is, the church is looking on the outward appearance and they look at people and they judge them outwardly or whether or not they're okay with Jesus. And God does not do that. God looks at the heart of people. You know, there's thousands and millions of Christians today right here in America who are wicked. Wicked in heart. God sees their heart. But outwardly, they look fine. Outwardly, everything is prim and proper and nice and clean and, and everything looks fine, but God sees the wicked heart of people. See, So God's going to test. Have you offered your body a living sacrifice? What does that mean to offer that we present, to present, to stand beside? That is to exhibit, okay? Recommend, substantiate. To be at hand. Be ready. See? Are we ready for the call of God every day? Aid. Aid. Are we ready to aid the Lord? Or are we going to just say, no, Lord, I'm not going to do that. I don't have time for that. I'm going to go do what I want to do. See? Bring before. Command. Commend. Give presently. Present. Prove. Provide. Show. Stand. Stand before. Stand by. Stand here. See, we're standing. We're on standby. Hallelujah. Stand up. Stand with. We're going to stand with the Lord. See? Did you present your bodies? Okay, now I want to back up a little bit because I want to read this. 
I beseech, I went through every word here, I beseech you. Paul saying, I'm, he's calling you near. The Holy Spirit's calling us near. I beseech you to call near. That is to invite. God's inviting us, inviting you. See, Jesus, they went out and they told him, come to the marriage supper. Come to the marriage supper. Oh, I'm busy. i got to do this. I'm busy. i got to take care of my land. Oh, I'm busy. I'm getting married. I just married a wife. Oh, I'm busy. i got to go bury my dad. Oh, oh, I'm busy. This is what they told Jesus. Oh, I'm busy right now. I don't have time for the, for the marriage supper. And many today, God's calling you to a deeper walk. God's calling to you to sacrifice yourself. For his great name, for his glory. And you're saying, I'm too busy. I'm too busy preparing for the end times. You're preparing in the natural realm for the end times. You're getting ready. You're getting your guns. You're getting your food. You're getting everything. But you aren't preparing spiritually. God says the spirit. See, See if there's no deer left to kill. If there's no cows left to kill. If there's nothing left to kill. Okay, with your guns so you can eat. Because that's why many of you got your guns. That's what you say anyway. What are you going to have left to shoot? See? See, if there's no more bread to buy in the store, and there's no more food to buy, no more canned goods to buy off the shelf, then what good is your gold and silver going to do? See? What's important is your soul and your spirit, man, and it, which lives in your body. Present your bodies. I beseech you. I invite you. Come. See? Present your bodies which contain your soul and your spirit, your whole being, who you are. Present it to God, a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. By the mercies, the mercies of God, the, the pity, the mercy. See, God has pity on us and mercy upon us. God knows that man without God is, is totally lost. And God became a man and did it for us. And he invites us to come. Hallelujah. You present, present your body, see, to stand beside, yeah, I just read that, present, hallelujah, your bodies, your bodies, the body as a sound whole, see, as a sound whole, it means as a sound whole used in a very wide application, literally or figuratively, bodily, body, slave, slave, are you a slave of God, am I a slave of God? Can God tell me to do anything and I'll do it? Or will I try to find a loophole to get around it? That's a big question, isn't it? This is serious. God wants you to know this today. He wants me to know it. A living sacrifice. Living, see? Living, to live. It's a, it's a verb. Hello, life. Alive. Lively. Quick. That means ready. Ready? Yes, Lord. Okay, yes. See, Jesus, he always said yes to the Father. He never said no. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. And the word sacrifice here is, it's the act or the victim, literally or figuratively, sacrifice. See, the victim. We think that word victim, oh, that's, I'm being mistreated. See, no, God doesn't mistreat us. God conforms us and transforms us. And that is a painful process. Okay. It is a painful process. But painful to the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise God. See. And the flesh don't, don't want to die. The flesh wants its own way. Hallelujah. Holy means. It, it, it means sacred. Physically pure. Morally blameless or religious ceremonially concentrated, consecrated, most holy one, holy thing, saint, see? holy, acceptable, acceptable, fully agreeable, fully agreeable. Are we fully agreeable with God? Do we agree with God when God comes and says to us by the Holy Ghost in our heart, hey, look at your attitude, it stinks. Look how you're treating your wife. Hey, look what you're doing to your husband. Hey, look how you're treating your children. Hey, look how you're a hypocrite. What you're doing, the Holy Spirit comes. Are we agreeing with God? Or are we finding a loophole? And saying, oh, that must be the devil speaking to me. Oh, that must be 
this or that. Just just anything but, but that being the voice of God. Because we don't want to bend and we don't want to break. We don't want to fall on the rock and be broken. See, And if we don't cry out, Lord, please give me the courage to, to fall on the rock and be broken. One day that rock will fall upon the people who don't want to fall upon it. And it will grind them to powder. That's what Jesus said. Those aren't my words. Those are Jesus' words. Hallelujah. So let's let's be agreeable. Let's be agreeable. Fully agreeable. Acceptable. Well-pleasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Reasonable is uh, rational. Logical. It only makes sense to, to let God have us. It only makes sense to say, Yes, Lord, you can have me all, all of me, Lord, all of me. And when we do that, you know what God does? He comes and tests us. He comes and tests us. And you have to say, yes, Lord. And I know you can't. I, I know many of you can't. I know it. Because I was there. I couldn't. I couldn't say, yes, Lord. But you know what? God's patient. And He's loving. He's long-suffering. He's all in the fruit of the Spirit. And if you be honest with God and say, I can't, I don't know how, I, I, I'm afraid, or whatever it is, you be honest with Him. And He'll He'll give you the courage and He'll give you the strength to say, yes, Lord. Yes. Okay, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Which is your reasonable, rational, logical, service and service is ministration of God it's where we minister unto him with our whole being and then he ministers through us Hallelujah. to touch those around us glory to God praise God you can't lose with God see you think you're losing you're losing out on having fun over here maybe oh you're losing out having fun over there what's all that stuff it's nothing but the world see it's all passing away and the lust thereof is passing away. Hallelujah. So what's important? God's important. See, everything, when we surrender and then God takes over our vessels and uses a spirit, soul, and body, see, everything that's happening then is, is for, is, it, it's, it's, it's filling us, it's training us, it's teaching us how to be governors, okay, how to be uh, you know, priests, how to be kings, see, to govern, how to be prophets. To speak forth God's word. And, and, and we're walking in newness of life more and more and more. See, you can't, ex you can't exhaust Jesus. You can't exhaust and, 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 and find the end of him. There's more and more and more and more for all of eternity, however long that lasts. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. Okay. And that word world there is age. It means age. To this age. Now the Holy Spirit, in, in another scripture, it means cosmos, the word world. And that's the orderly arrangement. But this word, that the Greek word is age. Okay? Because see, in 1900, it was a different age than it is today. But yet, we're in the same age, the age of grace, from the time of Pentecost, un, the time of the cross and Pentecost, up to today, this is the age of grace. But we've seen different ages of time within that 2,000 year period, okay? So the time we're in now is different than 1900 and 1912, 100 years ago. Okay? But, okay, be not conformed to this age. You see? Okay, you think about it. All the things people do in this age, don't be conformed to that. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed is uh, metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So how do we know? What, what, what happens? You have a little egg on the back of a leaf. It hatches out. A little caterpillar starts crawling around. It's a caterpillar. And it eats all the leaves it can eat until it gets big enough. And then it goes up and makes a little spot on a branch or a leaf. And it holds on to it. And it turns into a chrysalis. Everything in it is gone. It dissolves into a pure liquid. And then it makes a cocoon around itself and turns into a chrysalis. And then a couple weeks later, here comes this butterfly out. It's a transformation, see. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Hallelujah. By the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The renewing is renovation. Renovation. Hallelujah. Okay. Imagine your mind being a house. Okay. And the house is, is, is messed up inside. There's holes in the wall. There's all these places where, where rats can get in and all this stuff can happen. You know, a snake can slither up through the floor because there's a big old hole in the floor. This is your mind. Now think about this, okay? Renovation, see? By the renewing, the renovation of your mind, see? The Holy Spirit wants to come in. And he, wants to, he wants to tear out all those walls that you've built in your mind by, by paying attention to what the world's doing. And He wants to build new walls. He wants to make walls of gold, if you will, okay? See, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant was laid with gold in and out, hallelujah, which represents Jesus and the faith that is Christ, the purity that is Christ. And God wants us to be as such, see. God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight, see. He wants to renew our mind. He wants to renovate our minds, hallelujah, see. By the renewing of your mind, your mind, the intellect, your thinking, that is mind, divine or human in thought, feeling, or will, by implications, meaning, mind, understanding, understanding. See, many of you, you're, you're coming at the things of God with your logical, rational reason and understanding of the world, of this age, and you can't do that. You can't do that because God is, His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so, so high are His thoughts above our thoughts. And His reason above our reason. And His logic, if God has logic, okay, which I don't, I don't know if God has to have logic. <clears throat> But I'm telling you right now, He's Almighty God and He loves you. He loves me. He loves my wife. He loves everybody. He loves everybody. God does. He loves people. But He hates Esau. And Esau is the flesh. Esau is me, my, I. See, God hates that. He hates that. That's why He sent His Son to take all that and gather it all up and take it to the cross and put it to death. Hallelujah. See? It's sin. God hates it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your mind, your your thinking, okay? That ye that ye may prove, that ye may prove to test. Hallelujah. See? Literally or figuratively by implication to approve, allow, discern, examine, like, prove, try. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But you got to have that renewed mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. In, in John chapter 15, Jesus is speaking, verse 11, it says, These things have I spoken. Now this is Jesus talking to us. Unto you, that, that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. So Jesus speaks to us that, that, hallelujah, that his joy would remain in us. See? Hallelujah. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Now how did Jesus love us? He gave his whole life for us. So how are we supposed to love one another? We're supposed to give our whole life for each other. If everybody in the body of Christ would give their whole life, everything that pertains to them, for each other. Would there be any lack in the body of Christ? No. There wouldn't be. Would there be any uh, any people needing help? Like nobody's helping me over here or over there? No, there wouldn't be. If everybody truly did this. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this than that a man lay down his life for his friends. See, laying down our life for our friends. See, this is what Jesus did. He laid down his life, everything about him, for his friends, for you, for me, for the whole body of Christ, for all of us, for marriages, for families, for cities, for nations. He died. But he rose from the dead. He came out of the ground. See, And that power that raised, that the Father used to raise Jesus from the dead, that power lives in us. And He wants to be more active in us. See? 
That's why he wants us to die. That's why he wants us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Ye are my friends, Jesus said, if ye do whatsoever I command you. That, that's when we're his friends. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. See? See, God's ordained us. That ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father. In my name he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. See, he keeps emphasizing this. Loving one another. And that word love there is 25. It means to be familiar with. It means like uh, to love in a social or moral sense. It means it, it's just I love you. I care about you. See? And that's what a good shepherd does. He cares about people. Even lost people. See, Jesus, he, he walked among the lost. They were all lost. And he had compassion upon the multitudes. And so as shepherds today, as members of the body of Christ, we're all called to be shepherds in one way or another. We are to have compassion for the lost. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray today, Lord, that you would touch people, the people that need this message, Lord, you would get it right before their eyes and ears. And that, Lord, you would prepare their heart to receive it. And Lord, I pray that you would make this word even more deep in my own heart, my wife's heart, all the people that love you, Lord. Lord, there's trying times coming, Lord. I mean, we've been through some trying times, Lord, in our life, but there's trying times coming even more, Lord. And you want a people that hear you, a people that are obedient to you, a people that love you, a people who are not concerned, Lord about their own well-being, but concerned about the things of God. A people who know you. A people who know that, that you will provide, you do provide, and you do take care of your own. You do protect us from the evil one. And you are shielding us. Hallelujah. You are protecting us. You have your angels encamped around us. Oh, Father, I pray that you would just touch everyone here in this message, Lord, and that you give them the courage that they need, Lord, to surrender fully, to be obedient to you, to offer their bodies unto you a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Father, which is their reasonable service. In Jesus' name, amen.